Okay, the next operation we're gonna have to perform, or the next tool I'm gonna demonstrate here, is the bandsaw. I'm uh, sorry, drill press. What am I talking about? Drill press. Okay, so up here on top for eighth grade, your axle. Now, I know I said it was going to be an eighth of an inch, and that's what we're going to use on the computer, but it's actually uh, a little bit bigger. It's 20, what is it, 27, 30 seconds. Okay? So that's a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch, so it allows the axle to spin freely in the wood. We're going to put a straw over top of our steel axle as a bearing to give it um, less resistance, okay? Now, in order to change this drill bit out, okay, this is the chuck and hanging on a bolt, so this bolt right here on the other side, there's this chain, okay? This is the chuck key that goes into the chuck. So you're gonna spin it to one of these holes, this peg goes in this hole, I'm gonna push down and that loosens it, okay? Then I'm gonna go to the next hole, I'm gonna grab the drill bit and I'm gonna spin this chuck with the key until it loosens up enough to come out. Then I'm just gonna put that up in here in a hole that it fits in. I'm gonna grab the new bit, slide it up in there. It won't go yet, so I gotta loosen it a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. Now it slides up in there, okay? I don't wanna go all the way up as high as I can because you're gonna tighten it down on this part of the drill bit, and this is where it cuts yet. This is called a flute, and that is sharp. So I want to stick it in until I'm up to the bottom of the flute. Then I'm just going to go up with the chuck key. Okay, so I'm going to go up, and that tightens it. I have three fingers, so that means there's three holes. I'm going to snug up all three holes, okay? Hang this back up in the back. And then I need to use a scratch all to mark my center mark. So on my car, I would have a center mark and a center mark where I have measured up, that's the horizontal line, and I measure from the front, and that would be the vertical line. I would measure from the back for the vertical line, measure up to get the horizontal line, okay? And then what I would do is I would use a scratch all, which I have to go get out of the cabinet, right back. This tool right here has a sharp metal point, it is called a scratch all, okay? So what you do is you line it up with your center mark and you just give it a tap, okay? That little dent is gonna allow it to go find the center point of this drill bit and it's gonna drop in that little dent and you make sure that you are where you need to be drilling your hole, okay? So what we do is we line that up so that our drill bit fits, slides in there, go back up. The on button is this orange button right over here. I just flick this toggle switch up, okay? I'm gonna make sure that I'm two inches away for eight, four inches for seven, and I'm gonna drill my hole. I just line it up, the drill bit should find that hole, and I'm just gonna go nice and slow all the way through, and then I'm gonna come back up while it's still on, okay? And then I shut it off. Clear the scrap, and I'm gonna look, and I should have a nice clean hole on that side as I do on this side. So what you wanna do with your scrap piece of wood here? I made sure that I was in a clean area when I drilled my hole. I wouldn't wanna do it over all these big holes because that would create the backside to blow out, the splinter out, all right? Now, if we had to use the big drill bit or use this drill press, the chuck key is over here above that bolt, okay? It has a spring-loaded tip so you could not keep it in there. It'll kick it out. If I push it in that hole, it's gonna kick it out. It won't stay in there. So again, I would stick it in. I would go down, that would loosen it up. Okay, that allows me to move the drill bit out. And then when I put the new one in, I just go the opposite direction and it tightens it up. Again, you should snug up all three holes. 
so that that drill bit is equally put in there. Okay? Now, I cannot get underneath here to make a hole. So this blue handle allows the table to go up and down. On the back side, you want to make sure that this toggle is loose, which it is. I can spin it freely. Okay, so that makes me know that this will spin. So I want to lower that down so that I can move my piece of wood freely underneath the drill bit. All right? So let's say on my project, I only wanted the hole to go partly into the project. All right? How I do that is I set it behind the drill bit and I drop this down so that the flat part of the bit is even with my line. So right there. And then this, I loosen this little toggle, spin this around until the zero and arrow are lined up. Okay, check to make sure. I have my zero and arrow. I snug this little dog ear right here, this little toggle. So now it stops at that point. So I'm gonna go back up. Let's say this is my center point. I've measured over, made my line, move, measured up, made my line, and now I can set that into here. Now, does it matter what this looks like underneath? No, because I'm not going all the way through. But you should have a nice clean piece of wood under it so that it sits flat. All right? Go ahead and start it up. Oh, what did I forget? I did not use my center punch. So I find my scratch all. I line it up with my crosshair. And I give it a little tap. So now I should have a divot right where the two lines cross. Go ahead and line it up. Okay, turn it on and make my hole. All the way down, come back up, turn it off. Okay, now to clear the wood chips off, I can tap them off, tap them out of the hole like so, but I should not clear this off with my hand because you never know what was drilled prior, all right? There could have been someone that came in here between classes or something and drilled metal. The metal shards are like little tiny razor blades and they get stuck in your finger, they break off, and then you gotta get them removed, it hurts a lot. So, what we can do is we set our project out of the way, we can use the scrap piece of wood to help clear it off, tap that on the side, or directly behind the drill press are these foxtail brushes. You can go ahead and you sweep that off. Okay, sweep off the block. Hang it back up, there you go. One thing I don't want to see is people using their breath, their air to blow it off. Because if I'm going over here and I go to suck in air and this person is standing there watching me or whatever and they blow when I'm sucking, you're gonna get a little bit of fiber in your diet that you don't want, okay? So you guys can make chuck key is removed from the chuck. Again, this one is on a chain that's attached to the machine. You wanna make sure it's up and back so that there's nothing that can get wrapped up on that drill press when it's spinning, okay? Long hair must be up and back. I don't have that problem. If I had my lanyard out, I'd have to make sure that that was tucked in because anything on this spinning device could get stuck in there and you could be in grave danger. Okay, because this machine isn't going to stop unless somebody turns the motor off. Okay, so it would suck you in or it's going to rip your clothes or your lanyard or things like that. All right, so make sure that you are drilling your hole slowly. You go all the way in with the power on and all the way out with the power on. So you're always hanging on to this piece of wood when you go in and when you come out. All right. Um, Wait for the drill bit to stop spinning before we clear scrap. Never use your hand. Use the brushes. Um, and that's how you drill a hole.